Corner, Brown University professor Dr. Wu with the Chinese Americans of Rhode Island. Oh, hello. <laughs> Thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Lots going on. Protests today up at the State House about legislation signed into law specifically about profiling students, Asian students here in Rhode Island. Talk with us about kind of when you first heard about this to where we are today. My first re reaction was I was shocked. Um, I didn't know about this bill um, until it was actually already signed into law by the governor. Um, I was very surprised that I never heard of it because I thought um, when the state legislature um, is trying to push a bill that is going to directly impact um, a portion of the population, um, it would try um, to outreach to the people who, um, especially whose children are going to be directly impacted. And I've never heard of it. Uh, maybe I should have paid more attention to no local news. Um, but I, in my small circle of hundreds of um, Asian Americans, I know lots of us who had never heard of it until it was already um, passed into a law. Um, we were late at the discussion table, but um, we were here. And my second reaction is I wanted to find out what exactly it was, so I Googled it and I read the text. And um, it was very surprising that this um, act with the title that all students counts actually only tailored specifically to Asian population. Um, if you're a um, child in school for um, elementary and secondary schools, when um, all these um, entities, including the um, Department of Education and its, its sub-agencies are required to collect information. If you're Asian, then what subcategory you belong to. And Rhode Island is a very small state. Asian Americans count for less than 4% of the population. And I looked up census.gov information, and um, many of the subgroups that are required to be um, separated and um, data collected specifically for the subcategories have less than a hundred people in the state according to the 2010 because the next one um, is coming in 2020 according to 2010 many groups subgroups within Asian American population have less than a hundred population that's not school age children that's entire population so and, and they scatter in different school districts different towns and cities and that translates to possibly in many entities that are collecting data, a very smart, sparse data. And you only have a few kids in that school. So how do you protect their privacy when you say we are going, and this is in the text of the bill, mm -hmm. that data are going to be made public? Even though individual identities are going to be masked, but if you only have a few Asian kids in that school, everybody's going to know who you are. And there is some smart note in the text that says if an entity has less than 10 students to report, it will be notated, but it doesn't say what that means. Maybe there is an annotation indicating that the data is sparse and don't read too much into it, but it doesn't say when it's less than 10, we're not going to publish it, and or we're going to aggregate into a bigger group. So this um, causes a lot of concern on privacy. We, Asian Americans, many of our subgroups suffered from discrimination. And um, for example, there was Chinese Ex Exclusion Act. Um, as late as in the 1930s, Japanese Americans were not allowed to purchase land. Um, Filipinos um, in the um, 20th century for some period were not allowed to immigrate and become citizens. Um, when you divide a small minority group into even finer subcategories, we feel even more vulnerable than we already are. And we've suffered from discrimination in the past. The wounds are deep and still healing. So this fear for being under special scrutiny um, as the single group that needs to be further, finer categorized, um, that is some um, scary to us. And the bill is very, very short. It only says we're going to collect this data. It doesn't spell out specifically how the data is going to be used. And um, 
there are languages in the text that doesn't quite make sense to me um, because I'm a statistician. And um, the bill says that we're going to ensure statistical significance, which to us statisticians, ensuring statistical significance is manipulating data, is torturing your data until it confesses. So you have to accept if it's statistically significant, it is. If it's not, it's not. You cannot ensure statistical significance. You cannot force it to be significant. You have to gather your data, analyze it, and let it speak for itself. You cannot ensure significance. So a red flag went off when you saw that in, a, in addition to the legislation in general. I'm sure you started asking questions of folks, asking questions of who introduced the bill, asking questions of the education department. Do you get a sense as to why this was put forward? I actually understand that there are very good intentions behind this bill. Um, Rhode Island is the, not the only state who's trying to um, push for a bill that gather better data. Um, the idea would be that when we understand the demographic better, we can better serve the people and we can cater um, specific programs to different groups because they may be a diverse um, population and they may have different needs. But if we follow that logic, are we pretending that only the 4% of Rhode Island population, the Asian Americans, are diverse in their cultural backgrounds and in their needs for educational programs? Are we pretending that the 96% of the non-Asian population, they all need the same thing. We don't need to figure out if they need different programs. That is just ridiculous in logic. The, the same idea may have some practical policy that can be implemented well in other states that had a larger Asian population. For example, in California, that's a completely different story. Mm -hmm. Their Asian population is more than an entire Rhode Island population. Wow. And they are a bigger state in um, the land as well. So geographically, it's very uh, possible that different subgroups aggregate in different locations and they go to different schools. So um, you could potentially, once you um, gather, analyze the data, implement different policies for different school districts. That's a possibility. And um, we let them figure out what they want to do. But in Rhode Island, we cannot pretend that something that has been proposed in California, that something that may have had some research done in California is going to necessarily translate into Rhode Island. We have a tiny Asian population, and once we live in different towns and different cities and go to different schools, that's very sparse. And what kind of useful information can be gathered from such sparse data? And wh where is the research in this region that supports that this law is going to bring any good with the price of making its small minority Asian Americans feel nervous and exposed and under special scrutiny where other groups are not being asked to fill the same information. Now one of the things that I know that there was the protest today and there's a number of folks kind of working on this effort, working on this protest. So talk with me a little bit about that. Who's involved with this protest effort and what are their unique roles and ultimately what are you looking to accomplish? Um, this as I understand, it's a, it's a completely grassroots movement. I don't know um, who are behind all of this. I know um, I heard from it um, about it from my neighbor, and um, he and uh, she sent me text messages and said, <laughs> "Oh, well, we're going to make some boards. Can you help?" And I say, "I'll I'll try whatever I can do." And and I was very surprised when I found out of the data, so all I, I did my search on the internet. So I learned the text of the bill, I read about it, I, I read some, uh, I tried to understand the intention behind it, mm -hmm. and I have to say that um, it originated from very good intentions, but the research behind it I don't believe applies to the Rhode Island population. There's very weak evidence that it's going to translate into our state. And in terms of what we're trying to achieve, um, yeah, 
um, because this is grassroots. When mm -hmm. I say we, I can actually only speak for myself. <laughs> yes. um, this law in Rhode Island has been passed and it's signed into law. So, um, and the process of that, there's nothing we could have challenged mm. because um, there's no foul play in the process. Um, I can only criticize that the legislature didn't do enough outreach to reach the, the actual population it's going to impact. Um, but it went through the proper process and it was signed into law. So to challenge it, um, I believe some of the um, organizers for the protest are seeking legal advice mm. to see um, if it's possible and, and, and if yes, how to go through the process of trying to repeal it. Um, but for um, the, the more practical, immediate goal, we want to, even though we're late at the table, we want to um, join the discussion. We want to help make sure that um, someone is overseeing the implementation of this act, um, how the data is going to be collected, and who are going to access to it. I already raised the question for privacy. Mm. And um, who are going to um, curate the data, keep the database, and um, analyze it? And who gets to um, implement these? And who are the um, watchdogs? And we want to make sure that we want to raise the awareness so that um, the entire Asian population in Rhode Island can participate in this process. We can make this process transparent. And um, we can um, join the discussion of uh, trying to make the best use of an act that has already been signed into law. But more broadly, we want to raise the awareness for the entire nation so our neighbors in other, our friends and family in other states can start following um, their local news and so that they can influence and have their voice heard um, by their legislators uh, before any similar bills are passed um, in a fashion that without all parties affected being involved. And we want to um, ask them to bring this into um, attention of their legislators and to consider their special state's unique situation mm -hmm. because what applies to California may not apply to New York or Rhode Island or Massachusetts. That's why we have state level legislature. We have to look into the particular situation in a state. And I urge my fellow Asian Americans to look at your own situation and talk to your legislators and don't be late at the table like we are now. Well, I appreciate your coming in again to bring this to the public's attention of statistician at Brown. How long have you been there? About um, 12 years. <laughs> Will you be looking again, because it's signed into law, and I know you're approaching it from the legal angle, but if it gets to that level, again, you've questioned even who gets to see the data. Do you want to see that data, as you mentioned again, what was the specific term that had kind of raised that flag about statistically valid? Was that the terminology? Um, there's language in the <laughs> act that says we're going to ensure statistical significance. Oh, ensuring statistical significance. The um, term statistical significance is a concept related to a statistical hypothesis testing. And in, in the, its most common use is to evaluate whether a difference that we seem to observe, whether it reflects actual differences between the groups we're trying to compare, or it's simply compatible with random error or natural data fluctuation. Mm. And um, if it's not really different, likely and hopefully you won't reach statistical significance. And to ensure statistical significance is like saying we're going to make sure things, my conclusion is things are different no matter whether they are actually different. Well, we're going to be keeping close tabs on this issue. We're going to continue to talk with you as well, Dr. Wu. I appreciate your coming in today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We'll, we'll hopefully talk soon. Appreciate you bringing this issue to folks' attention, and we'll clip it after the fact, and we'll have it on Go Local very Thank shortly. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let you head back out into the heat here. Stay cool. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Wu from Brown University was at a protest today up at the State House. Now, there were several, uh, there were a lot of folks who turned out for this. This is specifically that legislation that had been approved and signed into law 
that was breaking down the Asian population here uh, in Rhode Island into subcategories, uh, and some folks have taken issue with this as to why this is needed. Uh, they're continuing to watch this issue very closely, and there was a protest, as Dr. Wu had uh, talked about, for a number of reasons uh, of historical significance for Asians in the United States. She talked a little bit about the difference of the size of Rhode Island versus that of a size of California, which she says has an Asian population even bigger than that of the population of the entirety of Rhode Island. So again, all news and politics here today.